Sonic Speaks. The rebirth of Damon Runyon Theatre never looks so grand. The good fellows of radio drama, our guest tonight is the grand pooba of crime audio drama and the captain of Decorated Air Theatre. His show, This Thing of Ours, has been featured on Midnight Audio Theatre on WCBE 90.5 FN in Columbus, Ohio, and is well on a little show called The Sonic Society. I can be speaking of no other than Mr. Scott Spaulding. Thank you for joining us tonight on Sonic Speaks. How are you, Scott? No problem, Jack. Doing all right. How are you doing? I'm good. Well, I'm getting over this cold, but other than that, I'm good. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> so before we get going, are there things we can't speak about without me getting a visit from some mooks with bats in the middle of the night? No, I, I don't think so. I think we'll be fine. Okay, good. <laughs> you, you don't have any people that are really sensitive on your side of the family. No, not that I know of. <laughs> Okay. Have you always been interested in crime and mob fiction? Uh, yeah, I started maybe like, well, when I was younger, when I was a kid, seeing like uh, Goodfellas and The Godfather and everything was always, you know, one of my favorite, some of my favorite movies and everything. And then probably in the early 2000s, maybe like 2003 or so, I found some uh, crime books on the, uh, I live in the Philadelphia area, found some on the, the Philly mob. So I started reading those, and I thought those were really interesting. And then from there, I just kept picking up more and more books, and just found it more interesting. And and still read, still read them today too. So it's a continuing, you know, interest. I think when I was a kid, just thinking when you were mentioning that, I think Scarface was the one that just totally blew me away with the 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 violence mm -hmm. and the the style, and I was just stunned that this was a, a world that I was completely unaware of and fascinated like you were as well yeah yeah just like just like the the goodfellas yeah it's, it's kind of the same thing like how, how does this stuff happen like you know how, how do they get away with this stuff how's this how's this work and stuff so that was kind of fascinating to me and stuff so have you always been a fan of radio drama as well um that uh I kind of stumbled upon probably around 2010 just online just kind of by accident kind of searching around because i i knew they existed you know back in the the 50s and stuff 40s and 50s but i just figured i would start looking around and, and then found uh audio drama talk and uh saw that a lot of other people were were doing it you know the modern way through you know the internet and everything so i thought that was pretty neat so i got more into that and and found a whole bunch of you know modern radio people doing it too so i thought that was neat who are some of your favorites that you sort of stumbled upon that got you so interested in doing this um if i can ask yeah i liked uh um campfire radio theater with john ballantyne uh his stuff is really neat uh witch hunter chronicles were one of the first ones i found um and then i found uh a lot of the old uh nightfall stuff from uh old cbc C yep found found all that stuff online and i really like those um that that style like the little you know the tales from the crypt type you know radio show i thought those were neat i mentioned damon runyon theater in the very beginning did you ever listen to those old time radio shows no actually i haven't you should check them out what i find fascinating in the damon runyon theater damon runyon is the guy who did guys and dolls oh, okay his characters and I find this happens in a lot of sort of New York mob kind of things. They have this almost faux intellectualization, very, very four, you know, four syllabic words in the way, and they do, you know, they, they cannot believe something as opposed to can't. Mm -hmm. they, they spend a lot of time being very articulate <laughs> about the things that they do. Where do you think that comes from? I don't know. Maybe them trying to sound, you know, smarter. You know, most of the guys are like street smart and might be a little insecure and not you know being able to 
you know, compared to like an educated type person. So maybe they just try, you know, overly try to make themselves sound smart when they're, you know, really just kind of street thugs. What did you try to do when you started writing voice wise for your characters? Did you did you draw upon some of the movies or the books that you looked at beforehand? Yeah, it was mostly mostly the books because uh, the movies are movies are cool, a good place to start. But um, also with the movies, more people have seen it, so they're more familiar with it and stuff. So if you took something from you know if you borrowed something from from a movie. Someone would say, "Oh, that you know, that's from Goodfellas," or you know, "Oh, that's that sounds like The Godfather." So that's the baseball bat scene. Yeah. 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 So it's kind of like, um, so I books books you get a lot more information, a lot more stories, and and a lot more insight into the stuff. So it's it's I think it's easier, and, and you get a lot more you know cooler stories and stuff from from the books that you can draw on and and create something. So I used used a whole bunch of different, you know, mishmash of stuff. Do you have a favorite uh, author in the genre? Um, the one guy that does the, he's a, a local guy here in, in Philadelphia, uh, George Anastasia. He's done a whole bunch on the, uh, the Philly mob, which I think I, I found pretty interesting, not just from living here, but just, just the stories they had from the 1980s and stuff. It was pretty, pretty violent time and a lot of, uh, uh, double and triple crossing stuff that went on. So it was it was pretty interesting. Kind of the, along the same timeline as uh, like John Gotti in the late eighties and early nineties. So, well, you set this thing of ours in nineteen seventy seven New York. Mm-hmm. Why did you decide not to set it in Philly? Um, just because I guess just because New York City is like the the big you know the the big city that. They they had their control over the Philly mob pretty much like, not directly but, uh, kind of indirectly. The New York mob controlled everything on the East Coast, pretty much everything. Uh, where else? Like Ohio, as far over as Ohio and uh, as far down as Florida and stuff like that. Whereas uh, the Chicago mob had everything from Chicago westward, including like Las Vegas and stuff. So I just figured. I don't know. I always liked the New York City mob with the five families and everything, and I thought that was really interesting. Um, yeah, but a lot of people don't think of the fact that organized crime was incredibly organized. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why I liked the late '70s because that was kind of the the pinnacle before um, 1980s came along, and, and law enforcement agencies really caught up to them and, and pretty much um, took them down pretty hard. Didn't destroy them though, but pretty much put a huge uh dent in them they i don't think they've really had it as good since you know early 90s late 80s so i thought that was a i think the seven late 70s were were pretty pretty neat time if you were uh you know a mobster or whatever in new york city maybe that's looking from you know the outside in and you know but and a little bit uh what do you call it uh, romancing it a little bit, but there's a lot of romance in in the story, and I mean sort of in the classic sense where you do you really do care about these characters. Mm-hmm. You really do like them in their own little way. You want them to succeed, which is a, such an unusual place to put the the listener. Right, but uh, yeah, when it, but if you're you know real about it and everything, when it comes down to it, they're all you know they're just there's really no real redeeming qualities about most mobsters pretty much all of them because when it comes down to it they're just you know crooks and thugs and the thing is for all the thing they talk about loyalty it only lasts as long as they want it to last right as long as it benefits them so (laughs) they're really yeah they're really when it comes down to it there really wasn't i I think back in the the like the 40s and 50s and and 60s and maybe maybe even the 70s you know the you say there's more loyalty and stuff, but I think the only reason for that was because jail sentences weren't that bad. They, you know, they'd get arrested and their lawyer, their lawyer would get them, you know, a couple years and go away for a couple years and come back and pick up right where they started. But in the eighties, it started uh, longer sentences, like pretty much uh, putting a lot of the bosses away for life who were, right. who were before untouchable. So a lot of the, top guys were going away for longer and longer and longer stints and and a lot of them didn't want to do that so that's when you know the loyalty broke down 
Now, do you think um, from your reading and such, what's the opinion of the organized mob that sort of comes with, from its Italian roots and stuff like that in, in North America? When you see, because around, around the 80s and stuff like that, you're seeing uh, sort of a move in of other mobs like the Yakuza mm -hmm. and, and Russian mobs. That must have been pretty dangerous times between them. Yeah, I haven't um, read much about those guys, but I know they do. They have intertwined. Um, the the one other group that that did have an influence on, or they had more of an influence on, were like the Irish mob in the late seventies and early eighties in New York. Uh, nice. They were called the the Westies, and uh, they um, they actually made a deal with uh, the Gambino crime family, where when um, Paul Castellano was the boss. And they uh, they kind of had a deal where they would give you know give a chunk of their profits or whatever, and they could use his name as an influence, you know, as a warning, you know, say, oh, we run with these guys now too. So, but uh, I haven't really gotten into like the Russian mob or you know the, the Japanese mob and stuff. But I know, and I'm pretty sure they probably took a lot of their stuff away when when uh, a lot of the Italian guys were going away, and also, with you know, the Italian mob has always had a bigger, you know, made newspaper, you know, sold more newspapers and stuff, and got all the attention with the mo movies and everything. So I think they were able to probably capitalize on on more of a low profile, and you know, sure. taking taking over some of their stuff. But yeah, I'm just wondering about even like biker uh, mobs and, and and biker groups. They, they must have had some sort of at least uneasy truce with with the main crime family yeah i'm pretty sure that a lot of them cross paths here and there i don't think they've really had any you know big uh cooperation between the two except for the the westies that i've read about so but yeah i haven't, I haven't really read anything about like motorcycle gangs and but i know they they did some you know similar stuff like with drugs and stuff but i haven't haven't really read a lot of that stuff so how did you decide that you wanted to bring this new sort of uh, appreciation for radio drama together with your love of crime and mob fiction? Um, I think it was just that was you know most that was real most interested in that that subject and topic, you know where there are, there are a lot of like sci-fi stuff and um, like I mentioned, uh, Witch Hunter Chronicles, like the the fan you know the fantastical type of stuff and also uh, a lot of the zombie stuff like uh we're alive and and uh hg world yep hg world and so i just figured i would go with something that i was you know most familiar with and, and would have you know the most fun with so and it's been unique which is i love it's such a breath of fresh air not that i don't love everything else but it's always great when you go wow somebody's doing something entirely different yep yeah because i was searching around and i i didn't really find any uh crime stuff like like on tv there's all the you know the csi type shows and and all the crime shows and stuff like that but i couldn't really find any any real stuff like that on uh audio drama so i figured i would sort of do that with with a uh, true crime mafia type feel so was it difficult putting it together do you think that's maybe part of the problem is that people who might be interested might find it too daunting a challenge uh, not really. I mean, I had a. It wasn't too hard finding uh, the cast. Um, I it put you know several casting calls out to to fill the cast. But once I did, it was you know everybody was on board and and was was pretty into it and stuff. So that wasn't too much of a problem. Tell me about some of your cast members that uh, that joined and and have been especially memorable for you. Oh yeah, the the main character. Uh, Carmine Santorelli is played by uh, Joe Rodriguez, who does a great job. So originally, I was just, I was just gonna play the main guy just because of the amount of workload that they would be, you know, have to to record and stuff. And I just wanted to make sure you know everything went smooth and everything. But once once he auditioned, I thought he would been he would be great for it. So I flip flop roles. So he's the main guy and, and has a real good. Uh, tough guy New York sounding uh, voice and uh, David Collins Rivera is uh, his 
main sidekick, uh, Joey Eight Ball, and uh, he's he's been great as well. He does he's uh, plays the part like perfectly as 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 I envisioned it sounding and everything. So it's been great, and a lot of other supporting guys to fill out some some of them play multiple roles like david collins rivera plays a couple roles um which always which is always a plus on uh, audio drama sure you can you can uh sp- spread the guys around with without anybody really noticing so that that works but everybody's been been great did you have to spend some time sort of over skype coaching some of the dialect or some of the accents not really because i mean again it's it it's a per- pretty familiar genre, and when you say you want to sound like a New York tough guy or whatever, New York, everyone you know pretty much knows what that sounds like. Who's familiar with, you know, Goodfellas and The Godfather and stuff. So that was pretty easy. I didn't really do much directing. Kind of just wanted them to add their own, you know, take on it and stuff. So I just kind of had them go with it, and it worked out pretty good. Oh, the sound uh, quality is fantastic. Did you have any problem with some people? and their microphones um i mean sometimes but i mean you just you kind of you whatever you you try to work with what you get and make the best of it and sometimes you know i'll ask if it sounds if something sounds really bad just you know the quality wise just ask if they could re-record it clean it up a little bit and and then and they have and and it usually works out pretty good but yeah that's always a challenge because everybody's recording in a different room different mic uh you know, different everything. So in, unless you can get everybody recording in the same room at once or, you know, in the same room at different times, uh, directing them physically in this, you know, together, it, it's, that's always a challenge, but I mean, you do the best you can and, and try to make everybody sound similar or as close to possible as you can. <laughs> Ness, did you have anybody who were saying well let's meet and do this on skype so at least we can hear what we sound like bounced off each other or no not it really all, it was all satellite yeah it was all satellite uh pretty much just sent sent the scripts and um i mean if i probably would have brought it up to him i'm sure sure they would be up to it and stuff but most most of the time i just figure everybody's got you know their own stuff going on and 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 uh you know with the real real jobs and, and real lives and everything I just figure you know here's a script whenever you can get it back to me since it's you know all volunteer and stuff I figure you guys are really helping me out this way you know just whenever you get a chance record it and send it back and and I'll let you know uh, if I need anything else that's pretty much how I went with it how long were the scripts um the first couple weren't that long I think they were like seven seven or eight pages and then some of the episodes i think the longest episode i had was like tw- like 20 some minutes or so which is still pretty short because i, I know some of the, some of the stuff i've heard each episode's like an hour or so but i I wasn't able to do that just just time time wise and stuff but yeah they range from like seven to eight pages to i think the most was like 20 maybe and that's on um you know, like a, a script for, uh, I can't think of the word. I forgot what the, uh, radio dramas. Yeah. Yeah. Type. Sort? Yeah. Type like the BBC or something. Right. Right. Or? Yeah. Like that. Not just regular, you know, the format. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. Did you use Celtics? Yeah. That's what I used. Oh, okay, so I, cool. so I used, so it was, you know, spread out a little bit. Yeah. 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 They almost like double the lines and such. Right. So right. So it wasn't like, got those extra. It wasn't like eight book pages type, type of, so each episode themselves run, run around 10 minutes, except for some of the larger ones. Yep. Yeah, about 10 minutes, sometimes a little longer with the, the intro and, the, and the, uh, the outro and stuff, you know, the credits and everything. But the, sure. the chunk of it is probably about 10 to 20 minutes or so. So what was your purpose when you sat down and said, I'm going to write an episode. I need to have this happen. Because I, I've, I've not written this genre before so i'm interested in you got you got a family of characters mm-hmm. what's your what's your purpose for that episode um basically i didn't really have like i mean i have a basic arc of you know a beginning and an end how it's you know but from there i kind of just kind of winged it <laughs> just kind of like introducing the characters 
and then um, just had a basic idea of where it would go and then just kind of fill it in with uh, ideas and scenes that I've you know read in books and stuff thought would sound neat and put them in situations that I thought were you know stories and stuff that I've read about that I thought was was pretty cool and no real formula or anything to it just kind of um, just kind of went with it and and didn't really map it out too much but had a basic starting and an end do you have it mapped out for the entire series um sort of i mean i i know how i want it to end unfortunately right now time i haven't been able to to put as much time into it as i would like just because it's i found i like doing it everything myself because you know you can control everything right but with that you know it takes it takes an enormous amount of time to do everything to, to write it, then edit it and then chop up the voice and then, you know, add the music sound effects and then, you know, mix it and everything. So, uh, that's been a challenge. So it's been on hold for a little bit, but hopefully someday I'll be able to, to get back to it. But, um, any mob story, they usually end up, you know, either dead or in jail. So it's, it's, if you, if you read a lot of the books, it's pretty, it's pretty easy to figure out what, what would happen to to most of the characters <laughs> where they're heading right right there's there's really no real happy endings with these guys no <laughs> that's for sure and 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 honestly you don't really want that in the end right because what is that saying yeah i mean there's i mean the, there've only been a couple um maybe not a couple but big name mobsters that that haven't you know gone out on their you know that have gone out on their own terms you know as dying of natural causes or whatever but most of them end up in jail or, you know, dead. So if if somebody came to you and said, "I really want to help out," and I'm, I, I don't, goodness knows, it's not me because I don't have <laughs> the time either. But if somebody came to you and said, "I really want to help out with this thing of ours," what if you gave me the raw files and I just ordered all the the files so that all all the rough editing was done? Would that help? Yeah. The. Uh... That's that's pretty much the the most time consuming is taking is chopping up the voice and lining it up and stuff. That can be the right. most painstakingly, you know, and it's it's pretty dull actually too. <laughs> as ever, that's as, what I find too. Yeah, yeah, as most people listening probably can agree can agree with. But yeah, that 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 would probably be a big uh, time saver and, and would help out a lot. And it wouldn't take away from that control, obviously, because you can go through and decide, well, I need an extra second here for the response or whatever. Right. That's just my my suggestion. And for anyone who's listening out there, if you want more this thing of ours, then by all means, contact Scott Spaulding and, and offer a helping hand. Because I know as a fan myself, I would love to hear some more again. It's been a year now since we've been yeah. missing out. Yeah, unfortunately, it's been it's it's been a while. Um, I mean, it's yeah, it's, it's disappointing and stuff. But I mean, I'm real happy with everything that 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 came out from it and the episodes and everything. So it wasn't it wasn't that it wasn't like I was uh, not happy with the results and figure oh, this is dumb. It was just you know a time time consuming and stuff because we're doing uh, my wife and I are also doing voiceovers on the side like uh voicing internet videos and and some radio commercials and stuff and production wise that way so that that actually took out a lot of a lot of chugging time and i had to you know weigh my options you know with a full-time job with that and the audio drama stuff so it kind of went on hold for now so unfortunately and audio drama doesn't pay so well right now. no no it, it doesn't i think i made more um, doing my first, you know, 30 second, uh, radio recording, uh, spot than I ever did in, you know, in the three years that I was doing the audio drama stuff. So, <laughs> but that's how long you've been doing radio recording stuff. I, my full-time job, I'm actually a producer, an audio producer at a, uh, radio and TV production house. Nice. I, I do the, uh, the audio, audio portion of it. I've been doing that since 2005, so it's going to be 10 years. Wow. And then started doing the audio drama in 2011, 
um, probably like 2010, getting everything together and, you know, just discovering and stuff. But the first, this thing of ours came out in 2011, which led to the, to the voiceovers. Right. Cause my wife was, uh, she also writes, uh, romance novels. I didn't know so that. So it's, yeah, she, uh, does that full time now. And at the time she was working uh, at an insurance company and we wanted to figure out a way for her to, to be able to write more. So we thought hey, we've been doing these audio dramas and stuff. We looked into doing like freelance voiceover work and that worked out and we we're able to do that and been getting more and more work. So she's able to, to, to write full time as well as the voiceovers and stuff. So that's fantastic. Congratulate her for me. That's yep. wonderful news. Thank she you. She played Sophia in the, in that's this thing of ours. Yeah, she was, uh, yeah, she popped up, uh, I think in the first one. It was right. I, yeah, she had a, a couple little spots. Does she do an audio book of her romance novels at all? Actually, we've talked about it, but we we haven't done any anything with that because I know audio books are are pretty big right now. Sure. Um, but for for our voiceovers, we actually haven't uh, gotten into the audio type book stuff. We've done mostly uh, explainer videos on websites and radio commercials and audio for TV and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, that's something we, we've thought about and we might, might try out later. Well, there's just so many possibilities, especially when you've got all that experience mm -hmm. in that world to begin with. Yep. Yeah, we definitely thought about that. What do you use to edit with, to edit the show? Uh, Pro Tools. I use Pro Tools. Um, that's what we've used, what I was using at work. And then, uh, like, 2010, I decided to get my own little, you know, studio set up at home. So that's what I was, I mean, no real preference. It was just what I'd been used to using. So I jumped in and did that. Okay. So what, what version of Pro Tools are you using? Oh, right now I have uh, 11. Have I 11. just got that a couple months ago. I use Pro Tools to record, but I often use Reaper to do editing because uh, I, I, I can't afford all the great plugins that Pro Tools offers. Oh, okay. Yeah, I actually record on audacity on my laptop and then just input it into pro tools because my we record in our uh, uh walk-in closet which is in a different room right so we just instead of lugging my because i added on a imac instead of lugging that back and forth sure we just do it on a on a laptop and that that seems to be working pretty good a lot of people use the walk-in closet as a way to be able to record yep and keep sound down do you put things up specifically like what's your best uh, suggestions for sound baffling. Um, I right now we just record against the like you walk in and then you go straight ahead is the the back wall. We just put lining on top of that and then just used our uh, all our clothes on each side and that seems to work pretty good. <laughs> Didn't really have to do much after that. So you have on your website too a reference to City Slickers, which is one of my favorite movies. How's that fit in? Oh, it was uh the just coming up with the name uh, Decorated Air. Because he was talking about, I put a link on that, I, and to the uh, the little clip that I found on YouTube, just where he he was he was getting upset about uh, saying that he he just sells air for a living or whatever, or he gets uh, he has like a midlife crisis in the be in the beginning. Of the movie. Yeah, and he says, "Oh, I basically sell air," or, or however he said it, and I was just kind of like, "Well, you know, I kind of just decorate air for a living, you know, making <laughs> putting." Uh, music to uh some guy's voice and some sound effects and then ship it off and it's basically just air i i always thought decorated air was just you know the the, the suggestion that you guys are gonna get a ton of awards oh <laughs> <laughs> you guys are always decorated yeah and doing great stuff that you're doing nope not yet <laughs> uh, well the website is beautiful and and the show is beautiful thanks and how many if you had your druthers mm -hmm. as they like to say how many episodes would you like to see of this series probably like around 20 so we were probably almost halfway there. Right. So, yeah, about 20. And you have a love you were mentioning of uh, CBC Nightfall mm -hmm. and CBS Mystery Theater. Yeah. You were mentioning on your website. Yep. And you're st are you still planning to do a series like that of your own? Yeah, no, that would be that would be cool too. I'd like to do something like that just of, you know, just do little one shots. Right. Just like a little story. I think that would be that would be a lot of fun. But I haven't really had some ideas that, you know, you jot down every once in a while but never had 
never sat down and, and put it all together, but I enjoy those and like the Tales from the Crypt type stuff. So those are I always like listening to, and that would be a lot of fun. So nice anthology series. Yep. Would you take other writers in who were interested? Um, I did um, one for – I produced uh, a sci-fi thing called Ed. Right. I, that's on my website as well. Uh, so that was that was the kind of thing they approached me, they wrote it and everything, sent me all the voice, and I just threw it, you know, edited everything and added the sound effects and stuff. So, yeah, I wouldn't mind, you know, doing that again, something with someone else sending me a script or whatever. That was a Mike Murphy script. Yep, correct. Did that come to you via Joe Stofko? Yeah, correct. Because he plays uh, the old man in my in my show. He plays he's the boss. He's sort of the head guy in Harvest Audio too, isn't? Yep, he? correct. Yeah, that's, that's where it came from. What's the best way for people to be able to connect with this thing of ours? Uh, probably through my website, uh, through actually my other website, because I have uh, decoratedair.com, and then I also have our, our voiceover stuff is decoratedairstudios.com. My email address through there is info at decoratedairstudios.com. And that's that's the best way. That, that one I check all the time. So I believe there's probably one on the uh, Decorated Air site. Uh, but I haven't checked that one in a while. My main one, uh, decoratedairstudios.com. Thank you so much for coming into Sonic Speaks. I really appreciate the chance to chat with you. I mean, we've talked on Facebook once in a while. Yep. But this is our first chance to talk voice to voice. Yep, no problem. Really looking forward to some more of this thing of ours. So if you can just put aside absolutely everything, don't eat <laughs> yeah. for a couple of months, stop sleeping that for God's good. sake, and let's hear some more audio drama. Yep, I'll get right on that. <laughs> Have a good night. All right, you too. This has been an Electric Vicuna production.